guys. Greetings and welcome to Prayer for America, the Nations, and for Your Needs. I'm Walter Zagarevich with Global Vision Ministries, and we have a very special guest with us today, Dr. Daryl Peregrim, all the way from Nova Scotia, Canada. And folks, before we go any further, please contact your friends, contact your loved ones, and let them know the broadcast is on, whether you're watching us on Facebook, LinkedIn, on our webpage, or perhaps you're watching us on Facebook or Telegram, or on uh, wherever you are watching us, please share the link. Welcome to you who are watching us on the various social media around the world. And today we will be praying for America. We will be praying for those affected by the hurricane in Florida, in Georgia, in the Carolinas, in Cuba. We will be praying for Canada. We will be praying for Ukraine. And if you have a need that you want us to include, please send it in and we will certainly try to include it if not during the broadcast we will uh, we will certainly pray for that need after the broadcast but we will try to include whatever we receive during the broadcast well uh, thank you daryl for joining us and happy birthday to you well thank you thank you it's wonderful to be with you again it's been a few months Amen. Well, it's wonderful to have you on here. And I just want to say that uh, I just want to apologize that we've had just a little uh, delay here. And um, I trust that uh, uh, you folks will understand sometimes there are technical issues that come up and we were able to resolve them and be on here. Um, uh, Brother Daryl, um, uh, I guess October is a very special month. Uh, my wife and granddaughter had yes. their birthday yesterday. yesterday Our yes. other granddaughter will have it later this month and it was it's your birthday today so uh, uh, God's richest blessings on you. Well thank you the same to Nina and your family as well and uh, yeah I sent off a note to Nina yesterday and of course she had one to me today so uh, yeah, we share very close birthdays. <laughs> yes. Well, um, we have been praying for Canada, and I believe God is answering prayers, mm -hmm. and I believe that things are getting, well, uh, perhaps a little better there, at least a little freer, and we're believing that uh, God will do even more in your nation. And we know that you are in an area, maybe not exactly where your home is, but you're part of Canada. Canada has also been affected by a recent hurricane, and um, yeah. um, we we know that uh, people had suffered flooding and problems from that uh, the damage from that er uh, not earthquake. I'm sorry, I meant uh, uh, hurricane, and uh, so we are we we may have forgotten about that because of all the attention going to the uh, mm. current situation down south, but we know that many people were affected uh, in your uh, region of Canada as well. Yeah, it really got impacted. We actually felt it. Uh, we didn't get the direct brunt of it. We were uh, more on the outskirts, but of course, we still got the high winds, got a lot of rain, uh, brought down a lot of branches here and a lot of, uh, a lot of three of our trees in our property came down, but no serious damage. And we lost our power for, for 15 hours. But fortunately, um, we hooked up a, we live rurally. So we, uh, I invested in a generator system and did some electrical. So we were able to kick that on and that helped us. But yeah, we didn't get hit at all compared to some of the areas, Cape Breton, PEI and, and Newfoundland. Some of those border, you know, right on the coast just really got hammered. So been praying for them Our in our own area of the district. We're, uh, we're doing a number of things to donate funds so that we can help some of our churches that really got uh, a couple of churches got wiped out, the buildings did, and uh, a number of churches, a lot of areas in town got hurt, so the churches are are gathering together and we're raising funds so we can help to support and and uh, give some, show some love and, and care for some of these people. So they said it was the worst storm Canada's ever seen, so wow. uh, based on that, they talk about pressure and, you know, all these different things, but uh, fortunately we were on the edge of it. We did 
feel it. My goodness, the, that wind was strong, but uh, I can't imagine what it was would have been like being in the eye of it. Right. And um, and of course, um, uh, just in the last few days, we know and we're getting more and more information about the damage um, in the southern part uh, of the mm. U.S., uh, particularly Florida, but not just Florida, other states as well being affected. And uh, so our prayers uh, are going up to the Lord on behalf of those who have suffered loss, those that may have lost loved ones, those that uh, have been hurt or injured, those that are um, maybe left without a house, without a place to live right now, and churches also that have been affected buildings damage i received late last night uh, some pictures and information from uh, a leader in uh, from cuba and um, he had shared some of the awful damage that took place there to some of the churches are trying to rebuild you know, some of the churches there and you know they're quite poor to begin with and yes. when uh, something like this comes to do it just uh, wrecks havoc and um, what little they had is is uh, easily damaged sometimes roofs easily blown off and then uh, um, uh, people are suffering so in one case he said one of the pastors or lost their home or a couple of pastors and they had to go and move in with neighbors temporarily so it's a very difficult situation in various areas mm -hmm. and so i think before we go any further um let's pray let's pray for the people there in canada who have been affected uh, we're not hearing about it now but yet the people you know the news came and went but now the people are dealing with the yeah. issues they've got to put their lives back together and churches have to rebuild and homes uh, need to be fixed and so we want to pray for the people there in canada we want to pray for the people that in florida in um, in the other states here and in cuba wherever mm. people have been affected so father we come to you in the name of jesus christ and we bring these that have been affected by these hurricanes uh, uh, both in canada the u.s cuba other areas father in the name of jesus we pray that you would sustain that you would strengthen mm. and that you would meet the needs of these people and Father, we pray that you would move upon the hearts of those that can give, can donate, can contribute time to help rebuild their homes, rebuild churches. We pray, oh God, that you would intervene on their behalf, that you would synergize whatever efforts are being made to rescue, to help, to rebuild, to put people back on their feet, that those efforts would not be in vain, but they would be coordinated in such a way that the mac for maximum effectiveness maximum uh help for the people who especially those most vulnerable those with the biggest uh, uh, needs in this very moment and we pray for those who have lost loved ones that you comfort them we pray oh god for those who are suffering uh, perhaps with uh, being wounded or hurt in some way by these um, storms we pray for them right now and yes. we pray for the churches and pastors uh, of those churches that you would help them right now to do everything possible that help would come to them to help rebuild their church buildings uh, and rebuild the lives of their congregations uh, in jesus name we pray and lord i pray a special blessing on daryl as he celebrates his birthday and i pray that you would give him many many more years of strength health blessing and fruitful ministry and your blessing upon his wife vanessa and their children and grandchildren in jesus name amen Amen. 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 Well, Daryl, um, it is good to have you on here. There's so much to talk about. Uh, Ukraine has been heavily mm. in the news, and we can yes. talk about that. But Canada, you are in Canada, and you've had, had some very uh, uh, just, uh, you know, just draconian, I, in my opinion, uh, restrictions on entry mm -hmm. and exit from Canada, which has made it difficult 
for people in uh, in ministry, in traveling ministry uh, within Canada, and of course outside of Canada, to go outside of Canada, uh, it has it, it was just so so difficult, and so we are uh, uh, happy to see that things are freeing up, and we pray that uh, you know that that things will get even better. And uh, but tell us a little bit of what's happening in Canada. Well, yeah, I, uh, of course, Canada took a very, very strong, um, draconian is a good word, I think, in some ways, they just, they really uh, divided the people. And and so regardless of where people stood in vaccinations or, or the COVID thing or whatever, they just, there was a certain narrative they had. And it really, it really uh, shut everybody down, shut communities down, shut uh, churches, everybody. And so it's been a long time coming back, even though, you know, it's been clear that that uh, we've moved beyond it. Many countries declared, you know, the COVID crisis as far as the pandemic over. There's still a lot of fallout from it, but it's not exclusively just from COVID. There's the vaccine harm. There's There's been all the lockdown damage. There's been, uh, we've had so many, I was just reading an article again today in Canada, and just the number of suicides and 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 uh, overdoses and losses of family just because of the lockdown, this, the mental uh, stuff that took place. People really did not cope well with it. Uh, I was unable to attend my my father's uh, funeral, and uh, you know, for two years I would be doing funerals for people, and we would have a small group of people, and uh, loved ones couldn't go in into hospitals to to be with their where loved ones when they were dying. It was just very, very, very harsh. And so there's been a lot of fallout from that. Uh, thankfully, uh, at this point, uh, they have, as of October 1st, they dropped a lot of the mandates uh, as far as travel mandates and, and a lot of those things. So uh, we're seeing things open up again, but we're still seeing the damage and we're still seeing the fallout because of the way they chose to respond to it. And it's not only here in Canada, let's face it, all around the world, they've been feeling it. We had guests for here from you, the UK and uh, they had their own, the UK had some very uh, strong ways that they dealt with it uh, everywhere. Every country had it in the States. Of course, you've experienced the same thing. So we're thankful the borders are, are now open. Again, so we're now waiting for the U.S. actually be reciprocal with some of that so that we can actually get it into the States and visit our, our daughter and, and uh, family in, in New York area. But uh, we're, yeah, we're, we're, well, number one, praying that we'll continue to get a reprieve from all of that, but uh, continue to pray that God would just continue to do some wonderful things in the midst of all of this in all of our countries. Uh, and as you alluded to earlier, there's so many issues going on you know in ukraine uh, just it's just the saddest thing and heartbreaking to you know i've been connecting with a number of people our, our common colleagues there because of you know all the talk about the annexation and and of course uh Herson, Zaporozhye are two areas that have invested in heavily over the last yes. uh, you know 15 years and to to see friends and colleagues now finding themselves in in this kind of a situation very concerning of course so many people are out of the country and they too are uh, you know they're quite concerned of course will they get back in can yes. they get back in? uh so it's it's you know some of the stuff we've experienced here in canada has really been a pain and and uncomfortable and and inconsistent in a lot of ways but uh you know in comparison to what ukraine has been having to encounter and deal with and our colleagues there uh, I just uh, just breaks my heart that it's carried on and continuing to to this point. Yes, uh, it is, and um, we uh, continue to get um, um, updates from Ukraine uh, uh, sometimes uh, very very frequently, even um, uh, not only daily, sometimes almost hourly. But mm. uh, we are continue to pray for the people in Ukraine and from Ukraine and other yeah. places. And certainly the situation in Ukraine, the needs are great and we uh, continue to um, work in the area of uh, relief, of humanity, mm -hmm. relief in areas, such, uh, in the frontline zones in particular, 
And so it has become complicated in areas that are now occupied, not only occupied, but now uh, Russia claiming them as their own. Uh, but yes. the people that are there do not want that. And the people there are suffering. Um, one of the, uh, some of these areas that have recently been liberated, uh, pastors we are working with have quickly been taking aid into those areas and uh, with the conditions they are finding, uh, mm -hmm. the, the, the things, the destruction that they are finding, it is um, in some cases just horrific, uh, quite often horrific. And you see little children, you see families that have been hiding all this time, so trying to survive during this period of occupation. And so in one uh, case, a pastor told me that he asked the residents there, uh, did not uh, the the uh, occupiers help you some with with food and, and humanitarian relief. They said twice we got help. It was one kilo of uh, buckwheat, uh, one liter of oil, three eggs, and I forget, a couple of uh, canned uh, uh, meats. Uh, and that was it in six months of occupation, twice. Wow. Um, wow. And so people were uh, trying to survive on whatever they could find, uh, the, whatever they had in reserve. And then when spring came, they started planting their gardens. But uh, it was very dangerous and continues to be dangerous because uh, of the mines that were uh, sown all over the place, some by air, because they have these aerial mines that they drop out. And, and they just go, they're very small from what I'm told, and they just plant themselves in the ground. And sometimes wow. people just going out to um, try to plant a vegetable garden, get a leg blown off or, or, or get killed. Um, and so even while the pastor from Poltava was delivering help in one, in one village, he says a cow blew up just not far from where he was giving oh him aid. A dog blew out, uh, it was blown up on the other side. Um, it just just awful things where people, um, you know, they, they have, have left these mines, these soldiers had left these mines and people are even now in great danger in their own towns and villages, but they are so relieved, they are so thankful for the help that is uh, being brought to them that people uh, have not forgotten them. And, and these pastors, when they go in there, they tell me, you know, uh, people are praying for you. They don't know you, but they uh, they are concerned for you. They're praying for you and they're helping you. And this is the help they've sent us to help, uh, the help that they're sending through us to you. And he's taken medicines, he's taken food and people, and now also some Bibles, some children's Bibles. And you should see the joy on the faces of these children, uh, the thankful hearts of these children mm. that had been frightened, hiding in uh, uh, cellars, hiding in basements for months now, coming out into the open um, to receive help and to try to put their lives back together. But the situation is very difficult. Some of these places have been liberated, but the Russian forces continue to bomb them from, an, from a distance or shell yeah. them. And yeah. some of the cities like um, Zaporizhia, where we've done so much work, the city itself has been shelled quite a bit. And so we pray for the people who are there. We're praying for the people in the surrounding villages. Some of those yes. villages have become very dangerous now. But you know, God is answering prayer. And the pastors we're working with continue to preach the gospel, continue to serve their communities, giving out aid, not just to tens, but to hundreds and literally thousands. In fact, yesterday in Kharkiv, the pastor told us um, uh, early in the morning when he um, got there to, uh, to set up kitchens and whatever, he says, we're going to be feeding 1,200 people today. Um, or was it Sunday? Or was it uh, this morning? Uh, uh, there's that, that uh, huge time difference. And so yeah, I have to, uh, sometimes I get um, a thrown by which day it was, but people are hungry. People are hungry spiritually, and they are responding by coming to church, by coming uh, to uh, uh, get, uh, when people deliver aid and they share a short message about the gospel. Nobody runs off. People listen 
attentively and many, many receive Christ into their lives. So uh, the situation in some ways, uh, in some places may have gotten better, but the need has gotten bigger because yes. people that did not have needs before um, are in need right now. Well, one week from today, uh, Nina, myself, and Brother Albert will be joining us. We'll be yes. traveling over there. We'll be uh, meeting. Um, we, we'll be in Poland and Ukraine and Romania. And um, in Poland, we'll be meeting with some of the groups uh, from Ukraine that mm. have uh, uh, fled from the war. And um, in the Ukraine, we'll be meeting with pastors from the front lines. We're calling them to a safer place where we could meet with them. We could encourage them and we could spend, they could have a, short, a little break away from yes. the frontline work that they have been doing. So that's all uh, gonna happen very shortly by God's uh, uh, grace. And um, and then um, um, and we'll also be visiting new groups in Romania that are being formed into churches there. So yes, the prayers go out not just for those in Ukraine, but those that have fled to other nations. Many of them wishing to go back, and some have tried to go back, but it's very difficult. Yes. Uh, Daryl, back to you. <laughs> yeah, and then all of the that the, I've been talking to some, even just you know, and well, I've tracked a lot of them, of course, uh, that are in so many different countries. Um, you know, the one one church in in uh, Herson, the people that have fled from that that ministry area in Herson. In over 28 countries now that, that they've dispersed uh, for their safety and and you know to go back it's it's hard you know some have said if Russia takes over we won't go back some said we can't go back and then you've got uh, others that are you know it's one thing to be displaced but then you if you happen to set up you know I was talking to somebody in in England just this morning and the challenge they're having trying to find a job and and get settled and they're still dealing with a lot of the emotional scarring and trauma from having to flee their own country seeing things atrocities take place and and fleeing for their own safety that we can't imagine fully i mean we've we've not experienced that kind of a thing and and so the prayers definitely need to be going up for for those who are still there but those who had have been displaced and uh, their life has turned upside down, left everything, lost everything, lost families, you know, uh, lost loved ones. Uh, it's just, it's just sad. And of course, you and I would be seeing the same thing. You see, uh, you know, posts uh, on people that have have lost uh, pastors and loved ones who were in the front lines and were were fighting for Ukraine, and they've lost their life fighting for their country. And and uh, we just we can't even imagine what that must be like at this point to be there and, and thrust into it. And so it, the prayers, you know, and, and uh, I, when I think of the scenarios all around the world, you got those, you know, from climate issues and, and the war and, and that, that's happening in, the, in, in Ukraine, and you've got the uh, many of the fallouts that are happening because of the COVID fiasco and crisis. There's so much uncertainty. And, and that's where I think a lot of people are coming they're looking to god and you've got those who are saying well if there is a god why does he allow this and they seem to want to blame god for everything but the truth is this has happened a lot of times because people have refused god and they've rejected the idea that there's a god who loves them and cares and, and has a better plan and, and a better way of doing things but there are so many people truly that are looking for answers and and for us to be able to pray it's one of the most powerful things we can do I've often said that I, I, there's things I cannot do either because I'm not in proximity uh, geographically or I can't fully understand because I've not gone through it in the same way. But God does understand and he, he cares. And, uh, you know, scripture that I was uh, reflecting on this morning, I wanted to, to just hi highlight for a second here. Uh, it's from Matthew chapter seven. It was Jesus. He was talking. He was giving a number of different uh, parables, a number of different lessons and one of the lessons, he, he talked about God, and he talked about coming to God and, and coming with confidence and with faith, because God does care, and he, he loves. And he, he says in Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 to 11, he goes, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receive. He who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be opened. 
which of you, if his son asks for bread, would give him a stone? Or if he asked for a fish, you would give him a snake? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give good gifts to those who come and ask of him? And I, I just, it reminded me that, you know, though we don't always see and understand the full complexities, uh, we don't always agree with certain things, there are different perspectives and dynamics. And, uh, you know, there's many things I, I, I give my head a shake at, at what we see around us. And yet I'm reminded that God is bigger than that. And he still cares. He's still in control. He loves us. He loves those in Ukraine, those who've been hurt by the, the hurricanes and, and damage. All of that he cares about. And he wants us to come to him in the middle of our confusion, in the middle of our need, in the middle of those things. And he promises, ask and you will receive. Now, sometimes we, we may ask foolishly and, and God's not going to give us foolish things that aren't good for us, but he does promise to provide. He does pr promise to protect. And so uh, it's, you know, in that same the portions of scripture, he, he gives the illustration of, of the man who, you know, kept coming to the neighbor and asking because he needed bread and and because uh, he had company. And the man says, go away, go away. And and uh, he says, be persistent, keep knocking on the door and come to God and don't let up, keep coming to God. He's not like the man who doesn't want to help you, he does want to help you, but he certainly wants us to be coming to him. And I think that in these days, more than ever, we need to be reminded of the fact that he does say, come, ask, seek, knock, and, and he will respond. And so as we pray, and I, I love, you know, as I've told you before, I love this whole prayer for America and the nations because prayer is probably one of the most powerful tools that we have at our disposal. We can give funds, you know, and as you know, we've been very involved together uh, sending funds to Ukraine for many years, and particularly in these last two years of the challenges, but, and with the, the Russia but we can only do so much giving and we can't all go there. And I'm so pleased we'll be praying for you and, and Nina and Albert as you go. And, and uh, it, when you said that, it reminded me of the time we were in Africa and, and doing some of the sessions there and had such a wonderful time of ministry and, and fellowship there. But I'll be praying for you, but not everybody can go, but everybody can pray. And if we pray in confidence and, and go forward, God does do things above and beyond all we can even ask or imagine. And so uh, we just need to remind everybody and be reminded ourselves, don't let up on our prayers. Don't let up on going to God on behalf of those who have needs around the world or even in our own backyard. Amen uh, to that. And uh, people sometimes think, oh, prayer is cheap. No, um, it, it is something that you're spending time, you're coming to God. It is not, maybe people just say that sometimes and don't seriously do it, but we do take prayer seriously. Mm -hmm. I know that uh, uh, prayer is so crucial Absolutely. in this moment. And when I we talk to these pastors there who are in the front lines, um, I mean, a pastor of a 2,000 member church getting up at 4, 4.30 in the morning, uh, at four o'clock, 4.30 in the morning, he's in the kitchen uh, making sure that they're going to get enough meals out to feed the the hungry. And they're not just feeding church people, they're feeding the community. Anybody, that's right. Um, I, have, I got pictures of stacks of uh, paper, requests of people to bring food to their apartment, elderly uh, families with small children that can't mm. get out. And I mean, this is a stack just, just probably for the next few days uh, that they're gonna try to take care of. And so yeah. they package food, they put bags of food together and, they, and, you know, and try to be specific. If there's an elderly person, well, maybe they need certain medicines. They try to get those medicines for them. If it's a family with small children, they may need some diapers. So they'll try to include some of those things in there and, 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 and try to help those people. So I'm just saying that uh, when I talk to him and, and he, uh, um, we're in uh, communications quite um, every day, I would say, or just about every day, sometimes several times a day. And uh, uh, one of the things is um, that he says, we sense your prayers. Thank yeah. you for praying for us. And he's not the only one. I hear that from oh, no. various pastors. They sense our prayers and they are seeing those 
prayers being answered before their eyes. Uh, yes. We send I, I, the, yes. Same thing, talking to some of our people, and they can say, we can feel your prayers. We know that you're praying with us. We feel God with us. So even in the midst of all of the, the that they're going through, that right. that you know, peace that Jesus said, I'll give you peace that passes all understanding. And it, I marvel at that. You know, I, I think of Vasily and, and uh, Olya and and what they're doing in, in Zaporozhye and that they're persisting. And, you know, I watch their service on, on the, well, it's not Sunday. Well, it's Sunday later, but I watch that, you know, and I, I can't understand it. Of course, I don't have a translator, but the joy and and the praise that's in the worship people that are worshiping as they're leading worship and as as uh, Vasily is preaching, you can sense God is there and that God is doing wondrous things even in the middle of it. And only God can give that. And that's what we can pray for, that God would prove himself and do what we couldn't do. And he can multiply. And I pray that all the funds that we've sent uh, to you and, and that you received from all over, I pray God multiplies that many times over when it gets there so that it it will go beyond what we can even imagine at this point. Uh, yeah. And again, that that's the power of prayer. And people do feel it. They see it. And, and we won't know the full impact of it until we get to heaven. But until we do, uh, we need to be faithful to, to lift them up and, and just knowing God is Amen. bigger. He has it. Amen. And so what the help has done, it's um, it has put the church there, the local church, um, as a living organism, as being the mm -hmm. hands and feet of Jesus to their community. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. what in, in offering hope to people, because so many of them have been left hopeless because of uh, seeing the continual shelling. Some people are, have kind of given up and say, well, I don't care if the next bomb hits me. Well, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, it's awful to hear such a thing, but people come to that conclusion sometimes after uh, being in this daily routine of yes. shelling and bombing and, and not seeing a way out, yet they meet Christians and they see a smile on their face and they see that they've got things together. They say, wait a minute, what's different about you? Mm -hmm. And starts hearing how when that believer shares about Jesus, that it's Christ in his or her life that's mm -hmm. made the difference and has given them the ability to hold things together and to be able to even smile occasionally um, in the midst of that situation. Now, they're all in the same situation. They're all in the same boat. So these people yeah. know that this isn't a fake smile. This isn't just somebody thousands of miles away. They're right there. They're they yeah. either one of them could get hit by the next uh, rocket, but they see a difference in that believer and that opens a conversation and not only a conversation, a lot of people have received Christ into their life. They've been putting like the Lord's Prayer and the Sinner's Prayer in some of these uh, bags of food and so on. And people then will say to them, thank you so much for putting that in because I knew I needed to pray. I didn't know how to pray. And this gave me um, a way of, you know, of, of starting to pray, starting to conversation with God. Mm and it's made a difference. And we're seeing that in meetings, people are coming. Um, Pastor uh, Sergei in Poltava, um, he, uh, because he pastors a couple of churches, one of the churches, he um, does a service on Saturday and the other one, the other city on Sunday. So on Sunday in his main church, uh, they had a meeting, they opened up to give out help to people and the place just got packed out. And so he shared the gospel with these people and 140 people made a commitment to Christ in one service. And he was supposed to have another service because they couldn't fit everybody in. And yeah. so the aid, uh, it's not buying people, but it is opening up their hearts because no one is being forced. No one is told that if you don't pray this prayer yeah. or you don't come to church, you're not going to get help. That's not at all what is happening. The aid is sometimes given out in church, yes, but sometimes, oftentimes, they carry it to the people where they're at. And um, so people ask, why are you doing this? Why are you risking your life bringing this help to this place that nobody even uh, wants to come to, so dangerous? And they said, we felt compelled because Jesus 
changed our lives. He loves us. He loves you. Amen. And we are here to tell you that he loves you. And we brought this help because we feel we, we, we are compelled to help you. Well, and, and Jesus himself said, they'll know you by your love. Amen. And uh, you can tell the fruit, the tree by its fruit. Well, it's one thing to talk Christianity. It's one thing to talk about a, a faith in God and that God loves you. And But it's quite another when you're actually living it out because now people are, it's not theory. It's now, it's not a profession or declaration. It's actually experience. They're experiencing true love and, and compassion and caring. And that's the whole point. I mean, that's what Jesus did for us. And he wants us to do the same thing. And so that's where when I hear these stories and, and you see the picture and stuff, it thrills my heart because, you know, we, I can pray and I can be a part of that. I can give uh, and I can be a part of that, but there still needs to be people on the ground there that are actually living it out. And so to pray for them, to pray for the church and pray, pray for the nation just opens up such huge opportunities for God to do wondrous things. And so I'm, I'm believing that it's happening. I think we're only seeing a portion of what's going on. And uh, I'm praying that just so, so, so much more will. And uh, who knows what the days hold. Amen. We're living in very, uh, you know, precarious times everywhere. Amen. But thankful. You know, we don't know the day, but we know the God who holds the day. So. Amen. And, and um, uh, Daryl, I think that um, um, w when we look at what is happening, we need to remember the people who are still in Kherson and in Zaporizhia, yes. Yes. in the occupied areas, yes. and, oh, um, and also Donetsk and Luhansk, um, because uh, there are Christians there, and there are some pastors that stay behind. Some pastors had a target on their back, and they had to leave. They were under threat of uh, arrest or worse. And mm -hmm. uh, but there are some that have stayed behind, and they're believers. So you mentioned one particular church, and they've got members in twenty-eight different countries, but part of their members are still there. Yes. And, uh, and so we need to remember those who are there because Absolutely. You know, it was already difficult under occupation, but now with Russia claiming those as part of Russia, it just uh, br brings everything up to another level with, um, with regards to the buildings of the churches, with regards to registration, with regards to, um, uh, to doing things according to Russian law. Um, they don't want that. They didn't ask for that, but they're being obligated. I guess we can say under gunpoint. Um, mm -hmm. well, same know, as it's happened in Crimea, isn't it? Yes. And yeah. so, but we're praying that, and, and it looks like the Ukrainian forces, and I believe it's what God's um, intervention and answer to prayer, they mm -hmm. are making headways in various areas. But my point is that there are people in those areas and they need our prayer support yeah. because yeah. now they've got to deal with um, a whole new level of uh, uh, of issues with the um, governing authorities um, that uh, Russia has installed in those places. And in some cases, uh, I know uh, from the reports that we are getting, they're not very friendly to the Protestants in churches. In fact, in the city of Melitopol, which is part of the Zaporizhia area, yeah. uh, they've taken over several church buildings. In fact, in one of the churches, they came in during the service. There was a live feed, and suddenly you see the soldiers come up on the platform, and then the feed got cut off. Um, it uh, They've taken over buildings, and they've threatened to do that in other areas. Uh, so let's pray that uh, yeah. God would give the pastors wisdom, the people who are their protection, because they are have experiencing a certain level of persecution already uh, right now. And we pray that God would use them. But in the midst of all this, Daryl, and I think you've mentioned, we've been talking about that, is the fact that people are getting saved. There's revival and actually new churches are being started. And this is happening amongst the refugees in Poltava. Uh, there, this is happening also, I believe in Zaporizhia. This is happening in, uh, uh, in Kharkiv and even in the occupied region, some places, uh, in her son region, new congregations are being started. So uh, in the midst of all the difficulties, 
uh, God is saving people and people are finding um, not only solace in Christ, but they are finding salvation, deliverance, mm -hmm. And, uh, and and churches are growing in, uh, and get filled up in many cases. And in some places, new churches are, are beginning. Yeah, so it, it, it just reminds me of the verse that talks about beauty out of the ashes. And, and uh, only God could do that. And only God could make something beautiful. And, I, you know, one of my prayers is that God would bring beauty to the people, uh, not only the church element, but that they would there'd be something that would happen within their spirit that would bring them that beauty of peace and hope and joy, even though they're in such circumstances. And, you know, uh, again, I can't for a moment fathom what it would be like to have them come in and just take over and you have no freedoms, you have no liberty, and there's the threat of bombs and killing and destruction around you 24-7. Uh, not, not, I can't fathom, I can only imagine what that would be like, but it's one of those things where there, I pray God brings beauty to them in the midst of the ashes that are around them, because it is, the destruction that's going on there, just even in the country and in the buildings and the properties, let alone what's happening to lives, uh, is so, so huge, and the toll is, is great, but that's where prayer is powerful. Amen. And so, folks, let's continue to pray for Ukraine. Pray for the frontline pastors mm -hmm. and churches, the volunteers that continue to uh, provide aid to those frontline zones and those who dare to go into the occupied areas to offer help to those people, because that is also going on. Pray for those who are in the occupied areas who are now under heavy persecution. Pray for those who are displaced all over Ukraine and all over the world. Uh, and interestingly, uh, Daryl, when we were there with you, Nina, uh, myself, you, and others were there for that 25th anniversary of the church mm -hmm. in her son. I remember the Lord giving me a word for that church that God had raised up that church, not just for her son, um, not just for that region or Ukraine, and uh, that, but for the nations. And I was thinking in terms of them sending out missionaries there from the church. But lo and behold, right now the church is in 28 countries. Mm -hmm. And I never imagined such a scenario. Um, but I felt very strongly that God had raised up that church for the nations to, to spread that revival, to spread that word, the message to other nations. And so uh, sometimes... Um, we don't know how God will utilize a bad situation to mm -hmm. spread the gospel. Like in the early church, the they were dispersed yeah. and the gospel went all over. And right. so um, I am by n no means trying to suggest that this war was God's uh, idea or God's uh, plan or, or will. But in the midst of that, God uses what the enemy intends for evil. God turns right. it around and uses it for something for a greater good. And we yeah. see Amen. that um, Amen. happening in, in certain ways in this situation here. And what's, what's remarkable is that uh, you know, when you find yourself in a scenario when you're forced to have to think differently and do differently. And uh, I recently, as you know, was with the senior lead pastor of that whole Harrison ministry who was, who has had to flee because he was threatened. And uh, so, but he's not gone. Uh, they're still doing services and they're doing all of their, I always marveled. I mean, I, I'm not a technology wizard whatsoever. If I push the button and it goes on and I'm happy, if it doesn't go on, I'm hooped. I need somebody, you know, I'm thankful Vanessa's, he's the, she's the tech wizard in our family, but these people are so brilliant and they've did so much tech stuff, even when, you know, everything was good in Herson, that same skill and that same stuff now they are doing from their, their place in Canada, where they've taken refuge with the hope that they would be able to go back, but now not, they don't know. Um, but so I had the privilege of speaking 
at, at their service and, and uh, that was being recorded, sent to all of their congregations and all their people in 28 countries besides still going into to Herson. And at that service in particular, the worship team group was in England. And they were leading the worship from England and they had different, and I just marveled. I said, God, you know what? You give us creativity and, and they've had to be creative, but they haven't stopped. They've continued to care for their people and love their people and, and minister to people to empower them to go out and equip them in the midst of, of what's absolutely unthinkable. And yet here they are doing it. And so you're right, the same thing, uh, God takes and turns it around and uses it for good, though the enemy intended it for evil. Amen. And we do have an enemy, the devil. Now, he may manifest in different places. Sometimes he uses people um, uh, to do his bidding, but God has a better plan, and yeah. his plan for us is for good and not evil. And just as Brother Daryl has shared earlier in the broadcast, the fact that Jesus pointed out how much God loves us, that he cares for us, that he meets our needs, that uh, if we being evil as people, as humans, do give good gifts to our children, how much more our Amen. Heavenly Father cares for us, how much more He wants to meet our needs. And you may be watching right now, you may be in Ukraine, you may be in Russia. We know there are many difficulties in Russia right now. Mm -hmm. And wherever you may be at, you may be in Cuba, and we have folks that watch us in Cuba. You may be in Argentina or Brazil. You may be in Spain. You may be in America or Canada. And you are experiencing a situation that to you is a mountain. To you, it's something, uh, it is something that you are having a difficulty coping with. We want you to know that Jesus Christ loves you. He's available to you. And he doesn't just, just uh, you know, it's, it, when you pray, he doesn't just like sort of listen. He does hear. When you come to him sincerely praying, God hears your prayer. And you know what the Bible says? If he hears our prayer, we know that he, we that if he hears our prayer, we pray according to his will. We know that he hears our prayer and we know that we have the petitions that we have asked for of him. So God hears our prayers and you know, if you ask according to his word, you are asking according to his will. And the more you spend time with God, the more you will ask according to his will. So don't be afraid. Well, I'm not sure if this is God's will. Well, just ask if you have a need. And, and, and because God loves you and God cares for you and he knows your need before you even approach him with it. Isn't that true, Brother Daryl? Amen. I also firmly believe that God knows where you are, and he'll meet you right where you're at. And by that, I mean, he, he'll not only meet you right where you're at physically, uh, but he'll meet you right where you're at emotionally and spiritually. He knows you. He knows your need. He knows your concerns. He knows your doubts. He knows your questions and, and your hesitations. But when I pray and I ask God to meet you right where you're at, he's going to go in, and I believe, I don't know how he'll do it, but I absolutely believe he'll go in and meet you right where you're at and address the concerns, the fears, the doubts. Uh, you might be saying to yourself today, this this God thing, I, I, I don't know, I, you know, I don't know if it's real. Well, I challenge you and I encourage you, ask God to prove himself. I promise you he will. I don't know how he'll do it. I don't know when he'll do it, but he will prove himself in your life. As long as you're sincerely saying, God, if this is true, I want to know. He will show you himself because he wants to. He wants to reveal himself in such a way that you can understand his great love for you. And so my prayer is that he will meet you right where you're at. And no matter where you are today, don't let guilt, don't let doubt, don't let uh, anger, don't let any of those things get in the way of letting God find you in a, in a new way today. And some of you are believers, you love God, but you're in a very tough strait right now. Others, you, you, you're not quite sure what to think about God. God will meet you. He will, he will find you if you'll let him. And so that, that's my prayer for you today. Well, Daryl, can you pray, invite people to receive Christ if they haven't already? Pray, lead them in a prayer, but also as the Lord leads you, would you pray for people out there who 
may be watching live right now and those who will watch later because of the time differences and uh, I, I, I would like you to just invite those that don't know Jesus yet to receive mm. him and then if you could pray f uh, for those who have needs whatever those needs might be it might be emotional it might be the the whole um idea of finding god the whole idea of having a relationship with god they've got doubts like you said they've got issues they're dealing with and and uh, circumstances they're in and like you pointed out god will meet people not only at the point of their need but where they are at uh, right now physically or emotionally um Daryl, would you would you invite people Absolutely. and lead them in a prayer? Absolutely. I'd be honored to do that. Uh, let's pray. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus Christ, and we thank you that in the midst of a world that is so upside down and there's so many um, crises and challenges and difficulties uh, all over the world for a number of reasons, we thank you that you are bigger than all of that. We thank you that you are bigger than every circumstance and any situation in a person's life and that you care about us. Your word is so full of, of uh, scriptures and words that talk about your love for us, your care for us. You love us so much you sent your son to die on the cross for us and that uh, he rose again that we might be set free and, and know a relationship with you. And so today, Lord, I have, I have three specific prayers. And, and the first one would be, I pray that you would meet everybody where they are at. Lord, those who are listening, those who will listen, I pray, God, that, that you would prove yourself in their lives. For those who do not know you and those who are questioning and they've got, they've got doubts, they've got challenges, I pray, Lord, that you would prove yourself to them and that, Lord, they would, would come to know you not because of somebody's profession, not because of certain things, but because you have actually met with them and you've proven yourself to them in a very personal and real way. So we pray for that to happen. For those, Lord, who are, are watching, who've not yet made that confession of faith, they've not accepted you, they've had reasons for not doing, but right now they... They need you, and they are, are looking for answers. But well, we know that you said, I'm the way, the truth, and life. There's no one but you. And so we pray that you, as they would respond to you, that you'd prove yourself in their life. And so if you were listening and you've never prayed the prayer of, of salvation and invited Jesus to come into your heart, I'd, I'd, I'd like you just to repeat this simple prayer with me. And I, I guarantee you, the minute you pray this prayer of faith, God will come in. He will prove himself and do wondrous things in you. Uh, again, don't know what that will look like, but he does because he knows you. And so just pray this prayer after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for loving me. I thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross for me. I admit that I don't fully understand all of it but I do want to know. And so I invite you to come into my heart, to be the Lord of my life. Please forgive me of my sins and help me, Lord, to discover your love, your hope, and your promise. Thank you for your forgiveness and for life that you give me now. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So I believe for those of you who prayed that God has come into your life. He, he responds to that prayer of salvation. Now you need to find somebody that, that as a pastor, a believer, somebody that you trust and go tell them that you prayed this prayer and ask them to help you to understand and, and grow in your faith. And they'll lead you to the right places where you can help begin to understand this. But even besides that, I honestly believe God's going to prove himself. He's going to do something wonderful uh, in, in such a way that makes sense to you because he knows exactly where you're at. Lord, I pray for those who are, are uh, know you, but they are finding themselves in, in very difficult circumstances, be it in Ukraine or because of the hurricanes or because of the circumstances in their life, be it health, physical or emotional or spiritual issues. 
I pray now in the name of Jesus Christ, that as they lift that need up to you, that you would, by the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of Jesus, touch them, reach down, meet that need, heal them where they need healing physically, heal them where they need healing emotionally. Lord, encourage and strengthen them spiritually. And whatever the practical need is that they have right now for provision and protection, I pray, God, that you would meet that need above and beyond all that they can even ask or imagine in the name of Jesus Christ. And we stand against the enemy. We bind the hands of the enemy in the lives of these people, in the lives of the church. We pray for Ukraine and ask, Lord, for, for a, a bringing down of the strongholds that are destroying this country and its people. We pray, Lord, that you would stop the onslaught and that, Lord, there would be an answer and a setting free and a freedom that would come about from this. And so thank you that you are bigger than this. We continue to pray for salvation. We continue to pray for restoration. We continue to pray for deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we thank you that no matter where we are at, you have us, you care about us, and that we can trust you fully. And so we bring ourselves to you today. Lord, help us to be light. Help us as the church to be what we've talked about in, in Ukraine, that we would be people who would stand up and shine for you and, and be a practical example of the love and the compassion of you as we encounter and deal with people all around us. Use us for your glory, we pray. Bless Walter and Nina and Albert as they make their way to Ukraine and Poland and Romania in the next week. Grant them protection and journeying mercies, but also, Lord, bless them, use them mightily to encourage, to build up, and to meet needs wherever they are and with whomever they meet. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. And Father, we lift up the nation of Canada and we pray for revival. Mm. Lord, we pray that the nation would once again rise up as a beacon of hope, a beacon of light to the nations of the world. Yes, okay. And we pray, O oh God, the, the, for Canada that as they are uh, come out of the uh, difficulties of this lockdown period, that Lord, you would just raise up uh, uh, evangelists, pastors, uh, uh, Lord, uh, workers, ministers, teachers, yes, yes. those uh, that you have called for such a time as this to go forth, not only throughout Canada, but to the nations of the world to impact lives around the world. So, Father, we pray for revival. We pray for a new spiritual awakening in the nation of Canada. And we pray for the salvation of millions of souls in the nation of Canada. Likewise, we lift up the nation of the United States. Lord, yes. we pray for your intervention in the affairs of this nation. We pray that the leaders of this nation, as well as those of Canada, would bow their knees before you and seek your will and would say, Lord, Lord, we need you. We need your wisdom. We need your direction. We need your blessing. And so, Father, we pray that they would bow their knees before you, seeking you humbly. And Lord, we pray that you would send revival to this nation once again in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. God. Amen. Well, I just want to mention this. If you would like to contribute towards the ongoing humanitarian relief efforts in Ukraine, please uh, uh, send your offering. You could do it by check to uh, P.O. Box 5377. El Dorado Hills, California, 95762, USA. Or you can go to our webpage right now and you can donate immediately using PayPal, using Givelify. Um, you could uh, later on this uh, post, we'll add also how you could do it. If you, you are in the US, you could use Zelle. And uh, we want to thank you all who have given. We want to thank you, Brother Daryl, and your ministry for what you have done. And uh, I want to say this, that we have, together have helped to feed tens of thousands of people in Ukraine have helped to relocate, to evacuate 
tens of thousands of people. And um, it would not have been possible without all of us working together. Yeah. You wonder what your um, $10 or $50 that you send can do. It could do a lot. And um, as I mentioned earlier, a week from now, we'll be on our way uh, to that part of the world. And we will be ministering there. We will be um, uh, offering the pastors from the frontline zones a time of refreshing for several days. So help us not to go with empty hands, but to be able to bless these pastors and the work that they are doing. Well, thank you, uh, Daryl. Um, it's been wonderful to have you on here. It's been too long <laughs> of a <laughs> gap since the last time we had you on here. <laughs> well, it's a joy to be with you always, and uh, we remember you always in prayer, and uh, we believe God's doing good things, and we'll continue to do so. Amen. Thank you. And folks, Remember, don't look at how big your problem is. Look at how much bigger God is. And that is not to minimize your problems. And folks that are in Florida, folks that are in Georgia or the Carolinas or up in uh, Northeast Canada that have been affected by the hurricanes and storms that are in Cuba, we understand uh, uh, that it is not easy, but that is why we go to God in prayer. So let us know how we can pray for you. And let me tell you that with God, all things are possible. Amen. Don't look at the bigness of the need. Lift up your eyes to the Lord. He's much bigger and he is able to meet any and every need. Isn't that right, Brother Daryl? Amen. 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 And that's why we close this broadcast by saying that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God richly bless you.